Welcome back to the 2024 character modeling series for beginners in Blender. In this video, we're going to be modeling the spatula as well as the salt shaker. And we're going to be using the sub D modeling workflow, which is basically modeling the low poly of each mesh and add a subdivision surface modifier to make it nice and smooth. So let's get started. I got my reference here. I'm going to hit shift right click to set my 3D cursor and I'm going to hit shift A mesh plane and let's rotate this so press r then x 90 type 90 and then scale it down and try to align it a little bit like that i'll come in edit mode and make sure this aligns a little bit i'm not gonna make the handle yet or any of this part below because we're gonna do that in a very specific way using using the loop tools add-on which comes with blender and I'll show you how to enable that in a second. So when creating a model like this, especially using this sub D surface modeling uh, workflow, you're going to have to think about how and where you're going to place your edge loops and your cuts, because we won't be using booleans for this. It's not really necessary. We want nice clean topology, right? So I'm first going to add the, you know, and the add modifiers generate subdivision surface. And that turns my mesh into this uh, weird looking shape. So if I go in edit mode, because, you know, it tries to round it out, tries to interpolate between, you know, the few points, vertices that it has. So if we add edge loops to it, so go in edit mode, press control R and click and see, we'll add more, we'll add like sharper geometry, but it actually also adds more geometry. So if I uncheck optimal display, you'll see what the mesh looks like. Let me turn this to level two for now and go in edit mode, control R, bring it up. And there you go. Now it's nice and rounded. Do the same down below. So what I want to do is add vertical edge loops around each hole so that we can easily punch them out and, um, you know, have the head of our spatula. All right. So I'm going to hit control R. Now, if you move your mouse, in the middle of an edge loop, it will go vertical and click. And I'm first going to do the one in the middle. So I'm going to slide this over to the left and click and control R again and do one for the right side and do the same thing with the other two. Now we need edge loops for the tops and bottoms. So I'm going to hit control R and one more for I mean, these two on the sides need one because they're higher up. This one is honestly already set, so I'm just going to leave it as that. Now, if I cut this out, we have a problem because it doesn't align properly. We need more edge loops on the inside, right? Like if I cut this out, it would look better. And why is that, you might ask? It's because this hole already has this extra edge loop which would be the ones on the bottom for the two holes on the side, but it, it's an extra edge loop. If we go to wireframe mode, you see there's more geometry here than up here. So we need to add more edge loops for these ones on the side as well. But you know, how would you know where to position it exactly? Um, one quick way to do that is by grabbing these faces that we're going to cut out later and press I to inset them. And hold down shift and bring it in a little bit, just a little bit, and then click. Now, if you go in wireframe mode, you can actually see the shape of the hole that we're going to cut out in a second. It looks sloppy up here, but then down here, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to grab this single edge and press G twice. So you can move it up or down. So let's do the same for these ones. Add a edge loop here, bring it down. Go in wireframe mode so you can see it. And I'm generally looking at the edge flow here. I want it to match the reference because right now it's too square looking. If I bring it up like that, that's good. Do the same thing over here. So I'm looking at this edge right here. I can't select it, but this edge right here. Let me draw it on this one right here. See how it matches? So yeah, do the same up here, edge loop, 
by the way if you have this because you know we already have this weird looking edge loop now over here if you create a new one it's going to look like that one way to fix that is i'm going to create a new edge loop i'm going to press e and then f and that's going to like basically base it off of the edge loop at the top just straight and just place it somewhere and this one we don't have to move individually we can just move the whole thing up or down so going wireframe mode i'm going to move the whole thing like around there now select all these faces on the inside press x faces and there you go you got some clean edges now let's make this thing 3d right so i'm gonna add a solidify modifier and put it before the subdivision modifier I'm going to set the offset to zero and definitely uh, if you don't see any thickness at all, press control a scale. That's much better. I don't have a reference for the thickness, but actually the default thickness already looks good and I'm going to apply that. There we go. Now the holes of the spatula look pretty sharp, which is not a bad thing, but if you want the reason they're sharp, which might be good to know, is because we inside them earlier and when we solidified it it's almost like it created edge loops on the inside so i'm going to select the edge loop on the inside you can select the whole edge loop by going to face select mode going on to a looping edge loop so this edge loop goes all the way around you see it loops i go on one of the borders and press alt click and there you go and then i'm going to hit s y and scale it in and that just makes it a little bit smoother so i'm gonna do the same thing over here select both s y bring it in yeah that's nice now how do we turn this into a circle or a cylinder right so first control r to create an edge loop here to make it a bit sharper and maybe bring this down a bit to match the reference and then you can grab this right click loop tools circle now if you don't have loop tools just go to the top left where it says edit preferences go to add-ons and type in loop tools and make sure you check this box and then come down here to the burger menu and hit save preferences now if you go in edit mode and you select a bunch of faces right click and you will see loop tools and then select circle. You can try out the other ones as well if you want. Okay, now scale this up and extrude and bring it down. I can extrude this one more time. Just right click, go in the front view, scale it up, bring it down with G. Press G and Z. Extrude it again, scale it. one more time and then it goes out a little bit so i'm gonna extrude it one more time and it has a rounded bottom so extrude scale it down and this handle has a little bit of an edge so i'm gonna create an edge loop bring that down and click and let's see here at the top or at the start of the handle right now it's too smooth so i'm going to create another edge loop and bring that down and make this sharp at an edge loop bring that up and that's pretty much it now you can you know add more variants to it like add an edge loop may scale it up a little bit is this rubber handle is supposed to be like deformed a little bit you know if you've used the spatula uh, many times so i think overall that looks pretty good let me sharpen this at an edge loop and bring it over here one at the top as well the top of the spatula is a little too sharp so feel free to grab some of these vertices and bring them down 
Grab the ones in the middle, bring it up a bit. Grab these, bring them up. And there we go. And then just right click and shade smooth. And you know, I don't like the way this uh, transition goes from the handle to the head of the spatula. So what I can do is select this edge loop, alt click again, go into the side view and just scale it in the Y direction. And now it's a bit more gradual, you see. And if the spatula needs an edge, you can select a bunch of these edges. So I'm going to click one, control click the last one. So it selects everything in between and hit control B. Scroll down so it doesn't have, if you scroll up, it will add more edge loops, but scroll down. And now the spatula has an edge to it. And I do keep in mind now you created an N gone, which is a face with more than four vertices. We can easily fix this by adding an edge loop at the back. And I'm going to select these two vertices. So these four will make one face. And press J. And do the same thing on the other side. It's a good thing to moderate your workflow and make sure your model consists of all quads or some triangles. Uh, but generally try to avoid N-Gons. If you do have N-Gons, make sure you put them in an area you don't really see. In our case, it's a bit more forgiving because these models will be exported into game engines like Unity and Unreal. That being said though, just because these models will get uh, triangulized, doesn't mean we shouldn't keep a proper workflow. If the shape of the model is messed up in quads, it will be messed up in triangles as well. So, so you see how this edge right now is this weird thing going on. So I'm going to create an edge loop. So here's the thing. At this stage, if we create a vertical edge loop, it will um, come down here as well and affect the handle, which I don't want. So to fix that, I'm actually going to, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to add a triangle here. I'm going to sin and add a triangle. Scale is that. So I'm going to select one edge loop that loops through and hide it. Now, if I add an edge loop vertically, it will not go all the way down. So let me fix this edge here. Edge loop E, F, like we did before, and bring it all the way to the left. Now the spatula is nice and flat. If I unhide things, you can see here's our edge loop. And we have five vertices on Anga. Does it matter for the shading? Not really, because it's flat. If it's triangulated or subdivided, it will turn into a quad anyway, or a triangle. So in this case, I could just leave it like it is, you know, or I could turn it into a triangle like that. Now I have three triangles. So it's up to you. I'm going to keep it as an N-gon. It's a flat surface, so it doesn't matter. N-gons are your enemy when the surface that you're working on is curved or organic, but if it's flat, you can get away with it, honestly. All right, that was the spatula for now. Next week, I'm going to go over how to create the salt shaker. Uh, I figured if I split the videos up, it will be um, better for you to follow it as well. I'm trying new things out with, you know, shorter format because I've noticed the longer format videos on this channel haven't really been doing that well, but it's just something to try out. Don't forget to join the Azo Discord server link in the description below. Just come in here and, you know, show your art, talk about whatever, and let's build this server together. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Make sure you hit the subscribe button with the bell notification as well. So you do not miss out on any future content, um, especially in this free course. And uh, yeah, next week I'll be covering the salt shaker should be a bit easier and um, the video might be shorter as well but we'll see how that goes all right so i'll leave you with this for now and see you next time